Hello from CNN London. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is World Report. French mutiny at the World Cup. And now, late reports that it might be over. Agence France Presse is reporting that French players have resumed their training. We are, of course, waiting confirmation of that story. Consumed by infighting, though, France's team had refused to practice on Sunday. The first World Cup on the Afri African continent isn't going well for African teams. South Africa is on track to become the first host country knocked out at the group stage. Aisha Sasei looks at what went wrong and what it means. <laughs> China's move to make its currency exchange rate more flexible has been welcomed on the stock markets. After sharp gains in Asia, European markets have also rallied. On Saturday, China's central bank announced it was ending the yuan's peg to the dollar. CNN's senior international correspondent John Vos brings us the details from Beijing. Any appreciation of the yuan is expected to be... Critics have complained that the yuan's peg to the U.S. dollar gives Chinese exporters an unfair advantage. They also argue it makes foreign goods more expensive to sell within China. Some estimates say the yuan is undervalued by some 24 percent. China's central bank established the peg in, in 2008 to help exporters hurt by the global economic downturn. The yuan had been allowed to float before then. It strengthened about 20 percent between 2005 and 2008. China had agreed to let its currency appreciate when it joined the World Trade Organization back in 2001. In Peru, now he says he didn't mean what he told police. A Dutch newspaper is reporting that Joran van der Sloot, crude oil continues to gush from a ruptured well into the Gulf of Mexico. BP's estimates of the worst case scenario may be even more severe than first thought. A newly released memo says if the blowout preventer and wellhead were removed from the sea floor, 10, 100,000 barrels a day could escape. That's 100,000 barrels a day. BP says the estimate is irrelevant because it has no intention of removing that equipment. Meanwhile, to cover its costs, BP may be building up its war chest. So, as the minutes tick down to a first service, we want to go to Sasha Har Harriman live at Wimbledon. A gorgeous day for it today. What can we expect? Uh, you could expect lots of excitement. The brass band is already, already playing uh, behind me. I can the hear studio. you. Well, you know they've paid millions for that rain roof, so it might come in handy as the weather in England, as you know, is kind of iffy uh, at the best of times. Sasha Harriman, thank you very much for that. Well, uh, speaking of the weather, let's go to meteorologist Ivan Cabrera at the World Weather Center. And I guess the question is, will they have to? Will they need that rain roof? Just retract it a, a little bit. Get that it in there. You get a nice shade. Yeah. <laughs> On top of the crowd, I think that's what we're going to be needing here. Uh, we're going to break tradition, and that's going to be the only problem, save for a few showers there in Cape Town. Okay. Ivan, thank you very much. I'm Monita Rajpal in London. World Sport is in.